Kelly Robbins and I'm going to be talking to you today about thematic maps. We're going to start this off with a brief overview of what thematic maps are and then talk a little bit about what makes a good thematic map and go into some examples of maps relating to the MySelfs curriculum more specifically. So to start off, what is a thematic map? Well, a thematic map is essentially a map that shows the what as opposed to the where. So it gives a representation of an attribute about a location. One of the most recognizable thematic maps for most people is probably an election result map. This is a type of thematic map called a chloropleth map. And so here we can see the 2016 presidential election results map. And the what here is showing is who won each state. And so this is probably a type of map that most people are very familiar with seeing and different variations of this for different types of elections. Another type of thematic map, which is really interesting, is a type of map called the dot density map. And this is an example of a racial dot map, which is put out by the University of Virginia. And what this map is showing is that one dot equals one person, and then the dots are colorized based on the race of that person. So what I like to do with this map is turn on add map labels and then scroll to my area of interest, which is Nashville, Tennessee, where I live. And I'm going to zoom in on Nashville. And you can see as you zoom in, the resolution of the map gets better and better and you can see more features. And so the more we zoom in, the larger scale the map becomes because we're going to see a smaller area, but see more features in that area. And so here is uh, the map all the way zoomed into the Nashville area. And so you can see a really good density of dots and really start to make out some trends relating to these dots. So one thing that I really like about this map to start out is that it has a legend over here. So it's very easy to discern what each dot means. And it's also got roads and indicators on it that make it really nice to be able to understand where you are in reference to what you're looking at. So here's the Vanderbilt campus area. And so we can see there's a lot of variation in the dots there, but a very high density, which is something that we would expect to see. And one thing to keep in mind with a dot density style map is that although one dot does equal one person, we cannot extrapolate location from these dots. So essentially these dots are normalized across a census block. And so just because someone has a dot right here that says that it's a blue dot right here does not essentially mean that that's where that person lives. It's just where that person's normalization was placed across the map. Another example of a type of thematic map is a graduated symbology map. This is a map showing broadband characteristics by census block. And again, here we can click over to the side and get a legend. And so we can see that the larger the symbol, the more houses are served by that. And then there's a color scheme also associated with that going from well served, which is a dark green to unserved, which is a purple. And so in here, I'm just going to again get to Nashville because that's where I'm located. And so that's what I'm interested in looking at. And so I'm going to zoom into the Nashville area so that I can get a larger scale, scale map where I can actually resolve things. And here we can zoom into the Vanderbilt campus area and begin to see what the broadband characteristics look like in this area. And so it looks like there's a large area over here just southwest of the campus that is underserved. And then there are areas on campus which are unserved and those are symbolized by the purple squares. And so the larger the square, the more housing units are served by that specific location. And then the darker the green, the better well served that area is. So you can see in this Vanderbilt campus area, there's not a lot of well served broadband characteristic areas. Another very interesting type of thematic map is a heat map. So the Department of Health here in Nashville is putting out heat maps by zip code of coronavirus cases, and they have a whole series of maps. And so this first map shows total active COVID-19 cases as of the start of July. 
And you can see that um, this map shows the darker the red, the higher the density of cases. And so this is a type of heat map. Again, this map is really nice because it has a legend for you to know what um, means high density and what means low density. But as you can see, this is by zip code. And so the spatial scale of this map is smaller than that of the other two that we just looked at. This map is also an example of a very static map, which you can't get more spatial resolution by zooming in. So you can't create a larger scale map just by zooming in. It's just static and this is the way that it was exported. Whereas opposed to the racial dot map and the broadband characteristic map, if you zoom in closer, you can get an even larger scale map and it's interactive. A few examples of some other different types of thematic maps that we can look at is a judgmental map of Nashville. So this came off of Reddit, I believe. And this is a map that someone has created where they've overlaid observations or um, stereotypes of different parts of Nashville on top of a map. And so that is the attribute or theme of this map is sort of the judgmental um, thought behind it. And this map is um, very interesting, especially if you're looking at sort of a wider scale of Nashville and um, has some interesting observations based on what this person thinks about Nashville. Last map we're going to look at is the Nashville tornado map. So this is a map that was put out by the National Weather Service showing the path of the tornadoes earlier this March. And this is the theme of this map is mapping the tornado path. But as you can see, this is a very small scale map because we can't really resolve anything in Nashville at all. And so it's very hard to see where the distinct path of the tornado going through East Nashville is um, because we're zoomed out to view a lot of the Middle Tennessee area as a whole. So thinking about these maps in relation to the MySelfs curriculum and what you will be doing with these maps, eventually these maps will be used to understand how your movement relates to society and so maps that are at a larger scale and show more fine-grained resolution will be a lot better to look at in relation to your movement because there will be a lot more information available for you to see, even at very minute changes, minute levels of change in your movement. Whereas opposed to, so something like this racial dot map would be really good because it's a very large scale map. Same with this broadband characteristics map. This heat map may be fairly good for um, resolving Nashville as a whole, sort of in the metro area. And if you had a lot of movement around the metro area, it may be interesting to see. But if you can see that the Nashville downtown area is very concentrated, there's a lot of different zip codes. So it's really hard to get any sort of discernibility between these zip codes. And so if most of your movement is related to being in the downtown Nashville area or you live downtown, this probably wouldn't be a super great map to relate to your movement. Same can be said of the judgmental map of Nashville. So it's really interesting, but if you're not moving around the Nashville area um, as a whole, then it's going to be a little bit hard to find anything that's very usable in this map. And then the Nashville tornado map is very interesting to see the overall path of the tornado. But again, you can't really resolve Nashville. This is a very small scale map. And so anything that you would be seeing in your movement would be very hard to pick out and get any real um, observational data from this map. One thing to note about these maps, so the racial dot map and the broadband characteristic map are both um, great of the greater US area. So you can zoom out and um, find any location in the US for either of these maps. Some of the other maps that we looked at, like the heat map, judgmental map, and Nashville tornado map are Nashville specific. But all of these characteristics can be applied to maps anywhere in the US that you're looking for, um, and also to international maps. So there's lots of opportunity to find similar maps in an area or country of your choice as opposed to just as opposed to just being Nashville specific. But Nashville is where I reside, so it's a great example to look at and think about what sort of maps would be interesting for me to look at in relation to my movement data. 
one thing to just end on is that there's a lot of opportunities to find really cool thematic maps out there. One person who I really like looking at maps from is Kenneth Field, who's a cartographer at Esri, which is one of the large geospatial software creation firms. And so a lot of times you can find really interesting and cool maps out there on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And you can just look at maps from cartographers like Kenneth Field and see what kind of ideas he has and then look for maps similar to that in your area. And so his site here, which is cardonerd.com, is a cool jumping off place potentially for you to look at different maps. He's got everything from breweries of the world to political maps. And so there's really endless possibilities about what types of themes that you could look at.